Oh, hey. Well, as you can tell from the video, we've got a different opening to this month, mainly because it's about 92 degrees outside. In Seattle, in this area here, we don't typically see more than 10 or 14 days over 80. And we can usually count on one hand, frankly one finger, the number of days we get into the 90s. But we do have summers like this where it does get extremely warm. And right now, it's one of those summers. It's been over easily 20 days of no rain and 80 plus degree weather. And it's just uncomfortable. We don't have air conditioning out here. Well, if you do, in fact, I've been thinking about it, but that's another thing. I'm building a layout. In any case, this month, I'm going to talk about custom building turnouts. Now, it's no secret that I use Fast Tracks for building my layout, and I use quite a bit of the tools there, which makes building much easier. Frankly, I showed you a little bit about doing a curved crossing. That's probably on a scale of 1 to 10, probably about a, you know, I'd say a 7. If 1 to 3 is easy, and 4 to 5 is moderate, and, or excuse me, if 1 to 3 is easy, and 4 to 6 is moderate, and 7 to 9 is challenging, and 10 being difficult, I would say building a curve crossing, probably about a 7. But again, we all have different skill levels at different things, and, and that's what they are. The advantage of Fast Tracks is that whatever skill level you're at, it roughly drops about two levels off of that. And then if you have the tools, it drops a third off. So I am really a huge proponent of it. Even to this month when I'm building a custom crossing or a custom turnout, I use many of the tools to help me get this done. That's why on day four here, I'm actually doing the video after building the turnout. Yeah, it took me a few attempts to do it, mainly because I wasn't thinking when I did the first one. And on the second one, I wasn't happy with the geometry that I'd set up. And then it dawned on me, oh, hey, why don't I use this tool and it'll make it easier. And sure enough, the third one came out like a charm. It's like glass. The wheels roll through it with no problems. And that's the advantage of fast tracks. But nonetheless, this is not a commercial for Fast Tracks. I'm just saying I'm a huge proponent of it. So I'm going to show you how I built a custom turnout for the Level MY and what I went through to do it. Now, I didn't do a uh, time-lapse video this time. I basically kind of walked you through a few steps and then went, took some pictures, and I'm going to sh talk about what I did in each of the steps to get the turnout built. Now, if you'll notice in the pictures, some of them are from the very first turnout. Why duplicate pictures? And from the last, when you see the very last step, you'll see the final turnout exactly as I built it. So nonetheless, I don't care how many build turnouts you've built, and I've built over 400 turnouts, as I counted before doing this video, and still, I have to sometimes do them over again. That's what model railroading is about. It's not about being perfect, it's about figuring out how to make it work. Also, next month in August, I won't have a video. Not because I don't like you or that too much is going on. I'm going to be at the National Model Railroad Association's convention in Portland, Oregon, where I'll see Tony Ryan and Clark uh, and, and everybody from Model Rail Radio and we are hoping to get together for a couple dinners afterwards. You'll see me there. I'll be wearing Model Railroad Radio uh, attire. And please get together. Let's get together and have, have a meal and, and just enjoy one another's company. It's a great opportunity to share. By the way, I also got a question from a, a subscriber who asked, why join the National Model Railroad Association? Well, frankly, it is an opportunity for model railroaders to get together and learn from one another. I, in particular, am going to be spending a lot of time in classes in JMRI. I'm taking four classes for JMRI, and I'm taking all the classes on the new LCC standard that's coming out so I can work on my model railroad and use the computer to interface. It's always been the goal that I've been working on here, and that's the new cutting edge. 
and I like it. I like the idea behind it. So I'll be taking all of those classes. So look forward videos as we go forward on this. In any case, let's get started on custom building this turnout. Again, custom building turnouts, probably about an eight. You want to know what's a 10? Double slip switches that are fully functional. I did a nine. I did slip switches that are not fully functional, but they function. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. My fast tracks, but all the little moving gadgets that are, that are typically in the prototype, they're not all there. But it still works exceptionally well for what we're doing, and it works very well overall. So there's my two cents of what the most difficult task to do, and I'm sure you have your own. There's a lot of them. In any case, let's go take a look at what we're working on this month. Well, here we are at the Level and Y, and uh, as I talked about earlier, um, it's bulletproofing time. And so the first train that I typically run and, um, is my maintenance away train. I, it's simply a, a locomotive, a uh, centerline car for the uh, first car. The second car is an Aztec uh, cleaning car, and then the last one is the uh, Tony's Exchange um, uh, clean machine car. Now these are fairly heavy cars, and believe it or not, I push them. I don't uh, pull them on the layout. I push them through the scene. And uh, we've probably, uh, it, it serves a couple different things by, by running these cars. A, I, I get the track clean and I start the cleaning process after uh, all the work of laying the, the main line and everything. And it, it really begins to, by pushing the cars, I, I find problems. Um, and so this is where I start. So I haven't really ran, other than what you saw in the videos, a full train yet. I am just running this and finding some mistakes. Now, um, the, what we're going to show you is in the level and Y here, uh, typically I use uh, fast tracks, uh, jigs, or, uh, or um, paper templates for most of my turnouts. And I do that for a couple different reasons. One, that means that I can be set up and ready to go so when the guys come here, we can just build and, and, and work on, on laying the main line. And then I really work very hard to try and make the track flow. Well, in the case back here, I've got a number eight uh, turnout that is the standard eight from um, Fast Tracks. And it's really not working the way I want to. And I'm gonna take the video here and um, I'm gonna show you uh, what, uh, how it looks before, and then what I'm going to end up doing is custom building a turnout for it. So I'm going to take this turnout out, and I'm going to custom build it. And I'm going to take you step by step, but I'm going to do a little differently. I, 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 when I typically work on uh, a custom turnout, I, it's not something I sit down and work on for 10 you know, a couple hours, whatever it is. It, it, it has been 10. I'm, I'm thinking of the case where I did the custom uh, crossing. That, that took me a good 10 hours. Uh, but in this case here, I'm probably just going to uh, work on it piece by piece. My wife is out of town for, the, for another couple more weeks, and so I am going to spend my time uh, just kind of putzing on this and, and working out anything that, I, that, that kind of makes it not work the way I want it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I build the template. Again, I, uh, you can use uh, C-plot, any of the, the, uh, the CAD programs that are out there. They work really well, and I have no problem with them. I just find that I prefer to just work with the scene. So in this case here, i got a couple curves I need to kind of work with, and I'm going to show you how I do it. It's very similar to the way I did the, the custom crossing, curve crossing. Um, but uh, that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, we're going to break away here. I'm going to give you some, some pictures in, of uh, what it looks like beforehand. And then uh, maybe a little, then I'll give you a demonstration of how I actually set up the template. So in a minute here, we'll take a look at the track. Okay, here is the, uh, the Y, the number eight Y that's in the turnout. You can see the wire coming up. John was getting ready to put the motor in there. And I kind of said, no, nah, I'm not happy with it. Let's run it a little bit. So you can see a thumbtack is kind of holding it in place. 
And as you can see from the Y here, I just don't like the way that the curve is coming around through here. So, and as it joins into that, uh, that Y and then goes back to the staging yard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a custom turnout and I'm gonna show you how I build the template for it and we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna reposition the camera and we'll meet you on the, on the layout. Okay, so here we are on the layout, and I'm actually sitting on the layout. And as this track is coming into here, it makes kind of a, uh, a very poor joint coming into this Y. It's fine coming into the staging yard, but this angle here is not, not correct. It actually needs to kind of be a curved Y turnout almost. And then this one is not too bad into here. It's not joined up, but I'm not happy with it either. It's just not right, and I want it to flow really well. It'll help the trains run better as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some flex track. I'm actually going to take this flex track right here, and I'm going to begin building the template that I need for this cur for this turnout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this track right back like so. And I'm going to start from a starting point. Now my starting point is going to be this point right back here. This is where everything has to diverge. So I'm going to take some T-pins here and I'm going to parallel this right up onto it. Okay, so that's now right here. It's perfectly matched to the back end there. Now what I want this curve to actually do is to follow this line right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and pin this right into place. Okay, so that's basically kind of covering the same area. If I'm not happy with it, I can add just a little more here. So I'm going to pin one right here. There you go. So that's matching this curve going into here. Now I'm going to take my everyday legal paper here, and I'm going to set it up and pin it. down to the homosode here. This would have been much easier if we hadn't had that servo arm going up there, but I'll deal with it. Okay, so that's pinned. Now what I have here is just an ordinary crayon that's flat on the bottom and I'm literally going to take and trace the top tracks. So there they are right there. You should be able to see those. I'm now carefully going to unpin the paper on one side here. Actually, I'll put a couple extra pins on the other side so if I accidentally move it on there, I can work with it. Now, I'm going to take this track here. I'm going to take these T's out, but this time I'm now going to flip the same track. And I'm going to flip it over. 
to match the line where I want it to go here. I want this straight right here, but I want it to bend a little hint through here. Okay, so that's the other angle I want, and that's diverging off of this. Now, I want this to be roughly in the same spot as the other one. So I'm going to just take and pin this down. And then I'm going to take my crayon again, and I'm going to draw. Yep, a little crinkle here. And there, I'll take this paper up so you can see it. There is my template for my switch. I need to build this frog, these divert these. Uh, these uh, points right into here, and this is my stock rails. And it's just simply a matter of working with the gauges, and I can work from that. Now, you can take Tony Ryan's idea and scan this, and then use uh, um, the method he uses where he actually computer draws it. But this will work just fine for me, and we'll meet you at the work table. I'm going to do another drawing because I don't like that one quite as well. Anyway, we'll see you there. Okay, here we are at the uh, workbench here, and you can see my drawing here, and I've done a little bit here. Again, I didn't want to do a time lapse. Now, you're probably sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is so hard and so complicated. Yes, I have built several hundred hand-laid turnouts, um, most of them by fast tracks. Um, that's how I learned how to do this was from fast tracks. All I've done is because I've built so many of them, I've kind of learned how to build them. It becomes second nature for me. I'm not even thinking about it anymore. But here's my drawing. I then took and laid out where I want my PC ties to go. And these ties then are just cut to the length. I'm not going to put in the throw bar one. And they just sit right into here. You know, and you might be able to see the little dots. That's where I've got to gap them to make them electrically functionable. So I don't have shorts. And uh, I'm just going to, again, I'm not going to waste a bunch of video time showing you how to do it, but just want to give you an idea how this just gets laid out. Okay. Now these are my stock rails. I've already taken the Fast Tracks stock aid tool. I've actually cut them to the length that I needed, and I have them marked. I use a simple black marker. I just mark on the inside where I need to go. And I, they will actually go right here, right on top of that. And this is the other side. And this is just going to follow. Now, I have it kind of bent out a little bit so it's not too tight, but what I'll do is I'll line that back up to the... Uh, to the rail there and get them all lined out and then I'll solder these into place and we'll go from there so um, I'm going to take photographs and I'll do just voiceovers of the photographs of what I did but I want to give you an idea of how this gets laid out nothing more than this is just homosewed actually uh, the paper you see on top of it is the uh, custom turnouts that I did uh, the, the curved turnouts I did underneath there and I just, this is how I build them when I need to make a custom one. And then eventually 
Um, I will place wood ties in between here. I'll put my stock rail, uh, I'll, I'll put my throw bars and everything in here. You'll see in the photographs. But in any case, let's get building. And this might take me a couple days. You might see me change shirts or things like that just because I'm in no hurry. This is, this is relaxing and very enjoyable work for me. So here we go. Okay, so here's the first uh, photo. And as you can see, I've got all the PC ties pinned into place. And I use the Atlas rail uh, nails that they sell. Those big nails make nice pins for pinning all the PC ties into place. And again, this is just homo a, sh a uh, square sheet of homosode, half inch thick that I'm working with. All right, so the next step now is to take one of my stock rails in this case, I took the one closest to me, and I lay it basically over top of the drawing um, and just tack it in place with some solder. All right, now I put in the other stock rail. Now it has to be in gauge, basically starting from where the throw bar is to the um, just the beginning of the uh, turnout to the where the throw bar is. After that, it can begin to get wider and wider because your uh, points will meet up there and that's where we're starting at right here. So we're basically measuring, uh, I use gauges to place them into there, solder those two points together and then continue on. Okay, so on the railroad we have to have a standard and the standard we use is the National Model Railroading uh, uh, gauge as our standard. So even though I use those other gauges, I always check everything with this gauge and again, just to make sure that after it's tacked into place, it's actually at the standard and the gauge that we're setting. All right, now we're getting into a little more complicated point here. First thing I'm doing is I'm taking and forming the closure rails and the points. Um, so these closure rails, I basically cut a length of rail that uh, reaches from just a little beyond the throw bar to just beyond where the frog ends and, uh, and the wings the wing guardrails would go into place and so here I'm just uh, showing you that uh, I simply just cut the rail to that length. Now I do the same thing it doesn't matter which closure rail I do the same thing measure them from the throw bar to just past where the wings would go and now I'm using the first of my fast track tools this is the number 12 uh, point forming tool I use this because this cuts the longest length uh, on the points and it gives me a little fudge factor involved with it here and I basically use uh, a baster file and then a fine file to clean it up and uh, so that's what you're seeing right here okay so the two points are made and now I'm going to start with the frog and basically I cut two rails that extend well beyond the end of the turnout to the frog point. That gives me, again, enough room to file product and work with from there. And so uh, here I've got the, uh, the two rails that form the frog cut to length, and that's all they are at this point. Now I have no idea what frog number this is. Um, so I basically take uh, my number six um, frog uh, tool. This is a, a fast tracks for a, a number six. It's actually this particular tool has both the frog, the toad, and uh, the points. Uh, I bought this when I was doing double slip switches. Um, and basically I'm using a number six and I'm cutting it. Now next to it you can see the fast tracks frog forming um, tool. And I will basically tack this together just on the tip and uh, this uh, estimating I'm gonna say this is probably about a number eight maybe an eight and a half but what I'll do is I'll form the I'll just solder the tip uh, on a number six uh, frog and then I can actually begin to close it to match up and what I'll do is I'll actually pin the rails so everything's engaged and we'll see that in just a minute Okay, so there's the uh, the two ends of the frog being soldered in a number six, and uh, enough said. Okay, the frog is now transferred over to the uh, turnout here, and what I'm doing is setting the gauge on both sides, and I'm pinning 
the um, the two rails here so that they're, they're engaged so I can then tack this into place and go on to the next step. Now this is really important. Two things that you have to really watch out for. One, the frog must be located in the center and engage on both sides of that. It just helps the geometry as the wheels transfer off of the closure rails through the frog and on to, on to whatever side of the turn at it needs to be on. So this is probably the most difficult part is getting this lined up and the geometry done right. And this is the part that, you know, is, is the challenge and, and where I run, why the reason I had to build it three times. And there we go, everything's in place and just tacked in the place. Okay, now this point, I'm bringing the closure rails into place. I've got them filed, the points filed, and I'm beginning to form the wing guards that go on each side of the frog and also just taking a look at the general geometry. Now, at this point, I will be honest with you, um, I cut the wing guards too short on this and that's why we had problems with the first turnout and then on the second one the geometry the way that it flowed between the closure rails and the frog point the frog was just slightly out of alignment for that curve and that caused me to have to lip, pull that frog up and build it again now I used the same stock rails throughout the entire process and and so you you can work with these and re readjust them but again um, I, this portion of it is the most critical portion of the entire turnout now once I adjusted and, and figured everything out I simply want to just mark where I'm going to notch the rail and the reason why I notch the rail and I'm just notching the very bottom of the rail not the actual rail itself just the web that sits on the bottom is so that it bends easier to form my wing guard. Now with the first closure rail in place and the point in place, I check to make sure that the wheels are going to smoothly form across. Nothing is actually soldered down. I'm just basically just making sure that this is exactly where I want it to be. And um, as you can see here in the the wing guard is just a little too short and it ended up causing some problems for me uh, in the future but it, it gets resolved down the road and if you do the left side you have to do the right side to make sure all the angles all match up exactly the way you want them to once all that's figured out and you're happy with it then take and tack into place those t first closure rails and make sure again that all the geometry and all the gauges all line up exactly the way they're supposed to so that the whole turnout functions and works correctly. Now if you look at the last photograph in this one you see it's a little different. I moved some of the uh, PC ties around and actually um, I used uh, just a basic uh, jig just to form the first part uh, a curve so that I could get this to go through just fine and now what I'm doing is I'm actually testing the wheels as they roll through the frogs and the wings. The wings are now the correct length and everything in the geometry is absolutely perfect. Um, so that's uh, the change right there and you can see this turnout is going to function just perfectly. Okay so at this point now I've added the uh, throw bar in and uh, check to make sure that it functions correctly and there's plenty of, of width in between there again grabbing the, M, the the gauge and making sure that my points there is a standard for how wide those points have to be and uh, make sure it's engaged there and then just basically at this point I'm checking all of the geometry and all everything that's supposed to be engaged to make sure it's going to function absolutely correct Okay, and then one of the last things I do is I add the guardrails, again, making sure that the uh, gap between those guardrails is within the gauge standard and that everything is, again, functioning correctly. Okay, so the skeleton can now come off of the drawing, and as you can see, that drawing and that turnout are almost perfectly identical. Well, here we are on day three, and the turnout's completed. I'll give just a test here, and as you can see, 
She slides through there just really nice and clean and smooth. In both directions. In any case, this project is probably one of the toughest projects you can do. One, the reason being, we don't build turnouts every day of the week. It's not like scenery where you go on and on. And there's lots of ways to do this. This project, as you can see from this, it looks a little different from the photographs from the very first one. This is my third attempt at doing this. The first two, I had some problems with the geometry and building it. But patience, being calm, and just keep working at it until you get it nice, clean, and smooth. And think it through. You can build these. It's not that tough. Well, here we are at day four. And the switch is all in, all the ties are in, and the track is re-glued down again with caulk. So the only thing left is to run my, way, my maintenance away train through there. Now to be fair, this is not the first time I ran it through. I've been running trains right now for about uh, 45 minutes straight. Actually, that's not fair. Uh, I've been running trains for about 45 minutes total. And for the last 15, 20 minutes, I've been running trains just to make sure everything was working well. And it worked like a dream. So here we go. Let's run the train through. And as you can see, I'm still running them backwards. Now, once I get 45 minutes straight and have had no derailments, and what I'm doing right now as it goes through is I'm marking where it derails so that I can then in turn fix it. But after 45 minutes of having no derails, I'll then flip the train around the other way and run it that way and see what I find. And that's the beginning of my bulletproofing. Anyway, hope you have a great week and a great month. And until next time, happy model railroading.